In this first lecture, we're going to talk about velocity, acceleration, and motion in general. Now, velocity is in a lot of respects analogous to speed, uh, and I'll explain why it's different in a second. But the equation that we can use really to represent this is velocity is equal to distance over time. That is to say, the distance that we travel over a given period of time. Now, there are two points that I want to make about velocity. Uh, so point number one is that velocity can be broken up into instantaneous and average velocity. Instantaneous versus average. So what does that mean? So average velocity, for example, let's say over a period of, say over a period of 10 seconds, right? So for 10 seconds, we travel a, a certain distance, right? And our velocity is not going to be the same over that period. Uh, but let's say after 10 seconds, we eventually end up traveling 100 meters. And uh, so we're using here SI units. The SI units for distance, time, and velocity are going to be uh, distances in meters. Time is in seconds, of course. And uh, velocity is in meters per second. So our velocity, our average velocity over that 10 seconds is going to end up being 100 meters divided by 10 seconds. And that equals 10 meters per second. And so notice what I did with the units. So I always like to keep the units because keeping units can tell you the units of the answer. So the units of the answer are 10 meters per second. So this is the average velocity over that time. So instantaneous velocity is a little bit different because instantaneous velocity uh, requires us to calculate at any given point how fast is the thing going, right? And typically the way you would do that is using calculus. And we're not going to get too deep into that. It's not really necessary. But just suffice it to say here that average velocity is usually what we're concerned with on the MCAT because average velocity can be calculated very easily as the distance traveled over a given amount of time. And the second point that I want to make about velocity is that velocity is a vector quantity. And so this is where we get to the idea of speed versus velocity. Speed is a scalar quantity. So speed does not depend on where we're going. So let me show you what we're talking about. Let's say, let me switch colors here. Let's say we start out here and uh, we travel in a circle and we end up here, right? So we traveled in a circle and we ended up where we started. Now, what is the speed that we traveled? Well, the speed would be the distance, the distance that we traveled over the time, right? So let's say this circle were five meters and the uh, time it took us to travel, it was one second. So in this case, or we'll say two seconds so that we can do some math. So in this case, our speed was 2.5 meters per second. But what's really interesting is that velocity, because velocity is a vector quantity, it actually depends where we go. So in this case, our velocity is actually zero because our starting point and our ending point are the same. And so with speed, it doesn't matter where we end up. What matters is the, the physical distance that we traveled. Whereas with velocity, velocity actually measures uh, something called displacement, which essentially means uh, compares our starting point to our ending point. And we can also think of this as we can say that velocity is path independent. So it doesn't matter the path that we took. So for example, if we start out here, we end up here. Let's say this is, let's say this is 10 meters, right? And uh, let's say we travel like this. And uh, we traveled actually 20 meters to end up to go from here to there. And so our velocity would still be uh, would still measure 10 meters divided by the time it took us, but our speed would be the 20 meters. And so the speed is path dependent. It matters the path that we take, whereas velocity doesn't matter. The path doesn't matter. So this is the definition of a vector quantity. That is to say, a vector quantity takes into account the direction that we traveled and takes into account uh, our starting points and ending points, whereas speed doesn't care. For the MCAT, we don't really need to know this in too much detail. The important thing to be aware of is the difference between a vector and a scalar quantity. So let's go ahead and write that versus scalar. All right, now let's talk about acceleration itself. So acceleration, of course, is the change in velocity. So the equation that we use to represent that is, is V equals AT. And V equals AT, that is velocity is equal to acceleration times time. And we can actually re-represent that as uh, acceleration is equal to velocity divided by time. That is to say the change in velocity, in fact, the delta velocity over over the given amount of time. And so we, of course, use this delta to represent change. So let's go ahead and write that here as well. And so notice something interesting that, that we can take velocity, the, the equation for velocity, and uh, 
We can write it the same way. And so, uh, of course, velocity is the change in distance over time, and acceleration is the change in velocity over time. And so, something quite interesting. All right, so let's stick with the let's stick with this version of the equation. Velocity is equal to acceleration times time. Now, there are three equations that we want to talk about when it comes to acceleration, and uh, so this is the this is the first one. And these equations will all relate slightly different variables, and they can all be used to derive each other. But we can use these equations depending on what variable we want to calculate. So the second equation is two a d. That is two times acceleration times distance is equal to vf squared, and again, this needs to be lowercase, minus vi squared. That is to say, the final velocity minus the initial velocity, and each one, are, is, each one of those is squared. And let me, again, represent the v as lowercase. And uh, the third equation that we want to use is distance equals one half, or actually I'll say at squared over two, plus v initial times time. And so these three equations all relate for us velocity, acceleration, distance, and time. And they relate them in slightly different ways. So depending on which variables that you have and which variables that you want to calculate, you use any one of these equations. And these equations, again, can all be used to derive each other. So it's not, you know, these are not really separate concepts. They're all, they all come from the same concept. They're just Essentially what happens here is that each one of these equations was set in such a way that you don't need a certain variable to solve it. So for example, this equation does not use distance at all. So if you're not given the distance traveled, you can use this equation. This equation does not use time at all. So if you're not given the time, then you can use this equation to solve the problem. And finally, this equation does not require velocity. So it does require the initial velocity, but assuming the initial velocity is zero, then this equation tells us how the distance that you'll travel over a given amount of time as you're accelerating over that time period. So we see that the, each of these three equations functions slightly differently and, and we can use in uh, different scenarios. So let me go ahead and rewrite these equations with colors so that you can see what variables are being used in each of these equations. And then what I'll do is I'll write three story problems and I'll show you which one of these story problems we use with each of these equations. And we see that we've got these three story problems here and each of these is gonna match with one of these equations. Right? And I also, by the way, I rewrote the equations over here. So these equations now, of course, I color-coded them. So you see that, you know, you can see distance, you can see velocity, time, and acceleration based on the colors. And uh, so now if we want to figure out which equation we want to use, well, essentially what we have to do is we have to figure out, uh, write the knowns and then write the unknowns. And then we can, from that, we can figure out the equation that we need. So let's start with the, the first story problem. So it says a ball is dropped from a 50 meter high building, right? So 50 meters is distance. So distance equals 50 meters. And then how long does it take? So that's time. So we want to figure out time. And uh, of course, the ball is dropped from a building. And so that means that we're looking at acceleration, right? Acceleration due to gravity. And acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. 10 meters per second squared. I know that in physics classes, they'll teach you that it's 9.8, but for the MCAT, because we don't have a calculator, uh, the math doesn't need to be that precise, so we stick with 10. So we've written the variables that are known, distance and acceleration, and then we've written the unknown, the one that we have to find. Now, the second one. A car is capable of braking with a deceleration of 6 meters per second squared. So in this case, acceleration is going to be 6 meters per second squared. Uh, acceleration and deceleration, by the way, are going to be more or less the same concept. And uh, how much distance does it require? So distance is our unknown. And then our starting velocity is 27. So that's V initial equals 27 meters per second. Okay. And finally, let's take a look at the third one. A ball is thrown in the air at 9 meters per second. So velocity, it's velocity initial, is equal to 9 meters per second. Of course, we know gravity again because we're talking about throwing things in the air. Acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. And uh, we want to know time. So looking at this, we see that in each of them, we, we're given some variables and we have to find some variables, and then we can match them to their equations. So let's go ahead and number them. So let me number them. Let's say this is number one, this is number two, and this is number three. So to start with, for this one, we're dealing with the variables distance, acceleration, and time. And so for that, we use this equation, right? Distance, acceleration, and time. 
right? This equation also includes v initial times t, but in this case, of course, v initial is zero because we just dropped the, the ball from you know, a certain height, so v initial doesn't, it doesn't matter, it's zero. This, this value in the equation uh, ends up as zero. So in the second one, we're dealing with acceleration, distance, and v initial, right? So in that case, we're gonna use this equation. We've got acceleration, distance, and then v initial. v final, of course, if we wanna stop, is going to be zero. And then number three, we're dealing with velocity, acceleration, and time. So in that case, we're going to use this one. And so if you were to plug these numbers into the equations, you would be able to figure out the unknowns. We're not going to do that here, but I would encourage you to take a look at that and try to do it on your own. There are going to be some, some twists. So for example, this one, you're going to have to double the final answer because uh, you're dealing with a trajectory of a ball going up in the air. So that's the, you know, the first half of the time and then the ball going back down. That's the second half. So for number three, you would have to double it. Uh, and so there's a little bit more involved, but I would encourage you to take a look at these and do them. But the important thing, really, the hard part is to match the story problems with the equations. And so let's zoom back out. So we talked about velocity. We talked about velocity equals distance over time. And then we talked about these three equations, which I have color-coded. And so that's all we're going to talk about here for velocity and acceleration for the MCAT.